Alright, what's up guys? So, this kind of stuff is really important and I'm glad that somebody's talking about it. This is Jesse B. We're gonna cover this because it's fucking important and this kind of stuff needs to be talked about. So, I'm putting this on here so that more people can see it. I hope you guys learn something from this. I just want to be very clear in the intro of this video. What I'm about to show you, number one, is going to piss some people off. And number two, it's liable to get taken down. Before I get into the brass tacks of this video, I just want to talk about something personal that just happened, which is oddly coincidental, being that I'm investigating mainstream music. I received a DM today, and this person sent me a screenshot of my comment section on one of my last videos. And it was a bot who was using and posing as me. I got that comment on the comment that I left on your video, and I reported it as spam to let them know that it was a bot. I saw that. Using my photos and trying to entice my followers to accept some sort of prize. Now, obviously this is a bot, this is fake, it's not me. So if you're witnessing this, please don't respond. But this only proves my point that bots are real. Go back to the first video and listen in on that. The second thing that happened today, I got a lovely message from Instagram saying that one of my videos was going to be taken down. And so I looked into it and sure enough, the video from when I first started doing music it was I Will, just two years ago. And the claim said that the video was being taken down for copyrights on a song that I own. Crazy thing, you know, the real kicker. Some people in my comments were saying like, oh, you should be able to fight that. There was no option. The there was no fucking option to refute this claim. It was forcing my hand and forcing me to delete this video. How convenient. Sorry there. <laughs> I'm just really passionate about this. Oh, I'd be pissed off too. That's totally understandable. That's a complete, like, loss of control in any manner. That's ridiculous. I own the copyrights. Instagram is taking down a video I made of my own song that I own the rights to because of a copyright claim. Don't believe me? There they are. Right there, on my wall. I keep all of my rights on my wall so that every day when I sit here at this computer and I work my fucking ass off for my music, I can look at all of my hard work. A visual representation. So yeah, I'm fucking mad. I'm fucking pissed. But I'm not afraid. I knew this was coming, but I'm not fucking afraid. So without further ado, that's my personal bullshit. Let's get into the meat and beans of this fucking video. I got a message from a couple of people in my comment sections and emails and whatnot asking me to look into this Michael Jackson evidence. What I'm about to show you is a video of Michael Jackson speaking out about Sony. He was previously an artist with the label and he talks about his experiences with them. I'm not gonna speak on his behalf. I'm just gonna allow him to talk to you today. Now keep in mind, all of the videos I'm about to show you in this, number one, I do not own the rights to. Number two, they have been known to be taken down numerous times. And number three, so that I don't risk this video getting taken down, I've taken the liberty of changing the voices in each of these videos. So they're either gonna sound really high pitch or really low pitch. But consider this, if you'd like to watch the full length videos to do your own research, I will link everything in the description below as always. So please don't take my word for this. Pay very close attention to this because this video is gonna be extremely long winded. I really don't like to talk that much. I prefer to perform than talk. And, and I really want you to hear what I have to say. The tradition of great performers from Sammy Davis Jr. to James Brown to Jackie Wilson to Fred Astaire, Gene Kelly, the story is usually the same though, you know, these guys work really hard at their craft, but the story ends the same. They usually are broken, torn, and usually just sad, and the story is very sad in the end, because the companies take advantage of them. They really do. And Sony... Sony, be, being um, you know, being the artist that I am um, at Sony, I I I generated several billion dollars for Sony. A billion. So that 9.12 billion as of 2023 is completely false. Michael Jackson alone. <coughs> there is nothing about the math of Sony that makes any kind of logical sense at all. It's impossible. 
it's not even possible. It has to be a lie. <laughs> Generated several billion? Yeah, this is fucking horseshit. Several billion. And, um, they, they really thought that my mind is always on music and dancing, and, and, I, and it usually is, but they never thought that this performer, myself, would outthink them. We can't let them get away with what they're trying to do because now I'm a free agent. I'm, I, I just owe Sony Congrats. one more album. It's just a box set, really. And so, um, with two new songs, which I've written ages ago, because every, every album that I record, I write like literally 120 songs every album I do. So. That's crazy as hell that Michael Jackson would write that many songs just to have the great ones that got put on the album. That's fucking dedication right there. That's a lot of hard work, and that's why he was the king, right? I can do the box set and just give them any two songs. So, so I'm leaving Sony a free agent of... Owning half of Sony. So, I own half of Sony's publishing in, and I'm leaving them, and they, they're very angry at me because of it, but uh, I just, I just did good business, you know? So, the way they get revenge is to try and destroy my album trying to destroy his album in early 2000s sounds familiar right but but uh I've, I've always said you know art art good art never dies um, and tommy matola is a devil i want to make this very clear for those of you who might not know who tommy matola is tommy matola at the time was a ceo or like the president of the music sector within sony he was previously married to mariah carey and michael jackson goes into that but just so you know Tommy Matola, he refers to this man as devilish and the devil multiple times. And Tommy Matola is a devil. I'm not supposed to say what I'm gonna say right now, but I, I have to let you in on the secret. Uh, please don't videotape what I'm going to say, okay? Turn that off, please. You know what? No, what? I don't mind. Tape it. Mariah Carey, after divorcing Tommy, came to me crying. Crying, she was crying so bad I had to hold her. And she said to me that this is an evil man. And Michael, this man follows me, she said. He taps her phones. And he's very, very evil. And she doesn't trust him. And he is a horrible human being. And we, we have to continue our drive until he's terminated. We can't allow him to do this to great artistry. We just can't. That's just one video that's available on YouTube that Michael speaks out about Sony. Here's another one. This is very important because throughout the years, black artists have been taken advantage of completely. I'm going to tread very lightly when I say this because a lot of people have been led to believe that Michael hated his color and that he was trying to bleach his skin to be a white guy and he got a nose job and he did all the surgery to look like a white person. But why would he go out and speak on behalf of the African American community if that's the case? Something to think about. And it's time now that we have to put a stop to this incredible, incredible injustice. And uh, like uh, Mrs. Sharpton was saying, people from James Brown to Sammy Davis Jr., some of the real pioneers that uh, that inspired me to be the entertainer that I am. These artists are always on tour because if they stop touring, they would totally go broken. An artist who is generating billions of dollars for this company, if that artist does not remain on tour consistently, will go completely broke. And uh... That's a fact right there. Yep. After all of the percentages are added up, the fucking artist ends up having to live off of the merch sales and the revenue that they'll get from ticket sales and a little bit of the percentage from CD royalties.
right, and download royalties. But mostly, it's merch and ticket sales that artists have to rely on, even when they're signed to a label, because a lot of that money goes into marketing, and that is expensive as fuck when they're blowing these songs up to get millions and millions of views on them. That is a very, very expensive marketing campaign, and that comes straight out of the artist's pocket. It's been, the record companies really, really do conspire against their artists. They steal, they cheat, they do whatever they can. Especially the black artists. Sony, Tommy Mottola. Tommy Mottola is the president of the record division. He is a mean, he's a racist, and he's very, very, very devilish. Now, you can believe what you want, but he continues to say the word devilish. He continues to say the word right. devilish. Anyway, you don't have to just take Michael mm -hmm. Jackson's word for it. Let's get into another almost equally popular artist, Prince. I know you haven't always loved the internet. Uh, how are you seeing progress right now with all of that? Can you use it to your advantage? Um, it's a double-edged sword, you know. A lot of artists aren't getting paid full scale for their art and the internet because of downloading and things like that is kind of like a black hole and it's hard to audit it's hard to get accounting and it's not that it's just about the money but it's about justice and fairness and when people say that they love you and they respect you but at the same time take you know 80 percent of your earnings 80 percent of your earn yep <laughs> Yep, that's exactly how it is after the marketing percentages come out and then the cost of touring, all of the supplies for touring, paying the roadies and everybody that works on the shows and stuff like that. The actual artist herself is left with that little bit right at the end that, like I said, is mostly merch sales and ticket sales. It's fucking wild. It's better to be independent because then you can control all of your finances. You know, you can have somebody in control of those for you that you know you can trust, hopefully, right? And it's just better to stay that way and stay away from the labels. It is crazy how much money they steal from the people that are making the art. And it's making these labels rich and keeping the artists poor and under control and subdued. They're told what they can and can't say. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper. It's all a big scheme. Thanks. Now here's a little thing that's kind of hard to decipher when Prince is talking. It's hard to decipher whether he's talking about the fan base who is illegally downloading the music is taking that revenue, mm -hmm. or if he's talking about the labels withdrawing that revenue. Then, and then expect you to fix your own communities, and they'll probably edit all of this out, but... Then again, that's, that's the sharp part of the sword, and mm -hmm. we're at the wrong end of it right now. So eventually, with courageous people going out there and actually saying something and standing up for it, I think we'll get some balance. That was Prince talking. Yeah. Why don't we do someone who's a little bit more up-to-date in a completely different genre, Snoop Dogg. And before you know it, the artist is frustrated. Okay. How many artists do you hear complaining about, we don't make money off our YouTube video. We don't make money off our streaming. The label won't let me go. So is the label the bad guy or what? They're not the bad guys. It's a system that was created many years ago that they're not changing. Mm -hmm. You don't about you, me, him. Notice that whoever made this edit just put a picture depiction of the devil. Uh. Him or the other. Michael Jackson wasn't even making dollars. Right. How, does, how does that work though? How, how is Michael Jackson not making money off his own music? Look, the who takes that? The record label? It's called points and percentages and royalties and shit that you get for the record. So, for example, if they were selling Michael Jackson record Thriller for nine ninety nine, right? How much money do you really think he made off of each copy of Thriller? <laughs> and that shit sold the most records ever. He made a lot of money, but what you think the record labels made? They made all the money. If the artist is the one who everybody loves, he should be the one getting the finance. Perfect example, Taylor Swift. She ain't an old artist at all. She's quite new. What did she do? She remastered her album. Why? Because she wasn't making revenues off of that album. Right. So again, we're getting painted this narrative by artists from completely different time periods and different genres that are talking about the same thing, about the artists not making 
the majority of the revenue, which is mind blowing because they are the ones who are generating the product. Now right. I'm gonna show you guys this <laughs> other band. This is the final video I'm gonna be showing in this particular video. And that is Smashing Pumpkins. This is a rock band. I'm just gonna let them do the talking. This is a clip from the Joe Rogan podcast. And let's just go ahead and roll it. Struggle to get the contract and then the contract is sort of, you know, the indentured servitude type of thing. We, our first contract was seven albums, Holy essentially shit. 14 years. So I signed that contract when I was 23. That's crazy. Okay, so I'm signing, at 23 years old, I'm signing a contract that's supposed to take me into 37. You're signing a contract for more than half your life. And, and if you look at the shelf life of most artists, it's four Man. to... So they're basically anticipating... That is insane. It's like... They use you until you're dried up and you fall off, then they drop you from the contract, but you believe that you're going to make it that full 14 years at the beginning sometimes, but not everybody hangs on like that, and then they lose out and go into debt and go bankrupt and shit because they have these assets that they can't afford anymore, but they thought that they could. <sighs> Fucking dirty, man. Dirty as fuck. Hating your entire arc. So just to clarify what he's saying, you're a new artist and you just got signed to this label. They're presenting you with information that's not only telling you how much you're going to make and all this other stuff and how long you're going to be working to the company, but they're calculating how long you're going to be popular for. And they use that to their advantage to take advantage of you. That's so crazy. So you don't have any leverage, you know, other than that they want to sign you. You sign the deal and then it becomes this weird dance of like, can I sustain success? Yeah. If you get success and you have leverage, they'll get out of your way because you're making them a lot of money. But the minute you're not making them as much money, then they step in and they start playing these Jedi mind tricks on you. Mm -hmm. We know what to do. You know, the public's going to forget about you. I mean, I've heard all these things. So all in all, each of these clips, like I said before, is from completely different genres, completely different time periods, and completely different platforms. They're all saying the same thing, that people are getting taken advantage by these labels. And not only that, that they're backed by the devil. So what does that say for us? That says for us, they've created a system and a machine that has a capability of running these artists' lives. So if they're able to control the artists, they're able to control you. And how you, you see it and what gets told. So then that leaves us with independent artists. How do you compete? What do you do? Where do you go? It could seem so hopeless as you unpack this information and you see the big picture here. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm going to talk about in my next video. All right. So, man, right? They want to control the artists because fucking if they can have that control, the artist is going to bend to their will and do whatever they can to not get dropped from that contract. They're going to pretend to be whoever the label wants them to be and say whatever the label wants them to say for television. And, you know, they're going to follow the fucking plot. They're going to follow the script because they're scared as hell to lose everything now. And now they're being told what they can and can't do. And there's no choice but to follow it if they don't want to lose everything. It's crazy. <sighs> This is an important conversation to be having right now because independent artists are very on the rise. It's becoming much more popular to be an independent artist. And we need as many people that are independent out here talking about it and giving advice on it. It's, man, I'm glad that this is being talked about. That's why I featured this on here. So I hope you guys learned something here. And man, Jesse, you killed that. Awesome on the research very informative very good job excited to see the deeper dive into all of this very excited to see that so i'm gonna get out of here i love you guys thanks for watching hope you learned something important from this have a great night i love you peace